In the beginning, there was an idea. Just 12 months later, it transformed into reality. An incredible journey of progress. Welcome back and hello, Felix. Hello, Molly. It's good to be back. The Dakar Rally 2022 was really exciting, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> I was following every single day and really cheering the team along. And for me, the absolute highlight was the raw emotion, the team spirit, to see the team succeed with those stage wins, with those stage podiums after all of that preparation and anticipation was so special. But you went there, you saw the last couple of stages. What was that like? It was amazing, like an incredible experience. And it was my very first time at the Dakar. I came at the right time because in the second week, Audi were the fastest guys. I saw two stage wins of Sainz and Peter Hansel and it was just amazing to see when this car comes <laughs> back into the bivouac and like all the mechanics, everyone just mm. cheering. So that was great, but also so much sand. <laughs> everywhere sent and you're going to see that in uh, my little vlog from the Dakar 2022 adventure. This is how the car looks like from the driver's perspective and also super important this is what the navigator sees. Basically I'm the crew driver of Matthias. What is your job? I'm a race engineer. engineer. Not normal, not normal, but this is the Dakar. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> that's Matthias action. <laughs> Very good job, Active. You need to work hard to be as fast as possible. I hope you enjoyed my little vlog here from the Dakar, but now it's time to head back to Ingolstadt. And if you need any sand, just hit me up. I got plenty. Thanks a lot for those great impressions from behind the scenes, Felix. Yeah, you're welcome. I had a great time. That was the perfect warm-up for our look back at the 44th edition of the Dakar Rally. Let's have a look at the Audi team's journey through this year's exciting event. I think everybody expected us to struggle. Everybody was thinking that they will find the Audi's stop in the state. We had ups and downs uh, since we started at Dakar. You know, it's nice to talk about all this, but then when you have to take them to reality, you also have to have guts to do that. For us, it was important to surprise um, our fans, our customers. When we arrived in Scrutineering, everybody was really close to us, asked some questions, how is the car? Or what do you think about the performance? On I think that was the moment where you can see how much expectations everybody had on, on us. The first start was a very emotional start. We worked 12 months to be race ready at this point. And then Stefan opened the stage because he was the last year's winner. I was not really nervous, you know. Uh, I was more, a little bit exciting you, to see what is uh, the performance of the car. I didn't feel any anxiety or any pressure, nothing. It was pure joy. That time we didn't know exactly what was going on. Just after two split, we broke her right arm. We were there cruising for an hour and a half and we couldn't find a way. So it means that we, we stay four hours in the desert was not easy to accept. You see that you P39, and we knew that Carlos was still in the stage, and Stefan had retired. It was a hard moment the first day for, for the whole team. For me, the biggest surprise of this rally was that we had close to zero issues with the concept. It was not like the RSQ e-tron with this battery and all the fancy technology. It was like down-to-earth stuff that stopped us. Stefan faced the biggest issues. Uh, there was one point when he stopped, when he saw Carlos. Actually, I had again a problem with the damper and he gave me his own damper. So, you know, both winners of the Dakar, Monsieur Dakar helping you. We were laughing at ourselves there in the middle of the desert. I said to Stefan, Stefan, have you brought your, your, your cream for the sun? Because it's, it's going to be a long day here waiting for the truck. 
Carlos was really sorry. I excuse me, Stefan. I need to take you. No, no problem. No problem, Carlos. I give you my shock absorber with a pleasure. The people in the bivouac was a little bit surprised about this reaction, but it's completely a team spirit reaction, and we we need to keep that. Obviously, the people were a bit down on that night. It was really bad because everybody, I could see it in the faces that the guys are all, what should we do now? Now, come on, we lost the Dakar before it really started. A lot of things can happen. And I think when I told them, guys, we can have stage wins and we can maybe have one car in the top 10. I think they all looked at me and said, I must be crazy. On stage two, we gained all three cars in the top 10. The team was happy, it was some kind of relief. But then there was stage three. And on stage three, Carlos won, and this was a historical win. When Carlos arrived, when we fall each other in the arms, it was something, and I, first I looked into his eyes and I could see it was his emotion was and my emotion was. Um, when you race a car for such a long time, then there is special emotions. It was emotional because I knew how much work, how much effort, how difficult was the beginning, how many problems we had and hard work always pay, pays off. But in this case, it's not only hard, hard work, it's that the capacity of the people in terms of engineering was, was great. And then from that point on, nobody could stop us. Matthias, he learned really quickly. Huh? He, start, he did his first Dakar one year ago. He did a really fantastic result. He was also able to win a stage. Carlos, he uses very few words. I think he just uh, gave me a big hug and it felt like my dad gave me a hug. Also, Stefan, if they wouldn't have been sharing so much, there would be no way that we could have done so well so early. And from that time onwards, he was not anymore a rookie. The day after Matthias won, on that day he had to open the road, and that is super difficult on a navigation stage. Mm. And you must know that Emil started one year ago navigation. To have such a position, I think he finished fourth on mm. that day, which is really something very special. I think the navigators in Dakar are the, the true heroes. The co-drivers of the Dakar has a huge, huge task. People underestimate how difficult is their job. Stefan did the third win. Stefan passed me on one stage and we tried to follow him in the dunes. I felt that I was trying my best just to follow him and then after the stage he said, yeah, I was just cruising, taking it easy. And I was, that was not taking it easy for me. I felt I was risking my life just to try and follow. It's really exciting when you know during the stage that you are really fast, you did the perfect stage in the beginning, but you don't know if those are faster than you. And when we passed the finish line and we saw on the, on the screen, first position. So now we have three stage wins, Matthias, Carlos and Stefan and their co-drivers. I mean, it, it's an incredible feeling. The car is amazing. If you, if you see this car running in the sand with, with these motorsport legends inside, it's really special for me. I would say what I really enjoy the most is that I didn't have to shift, uh, especially in the dunes, then you have instant response of the engines when you hit the gas pedal. The guys or the team, everybody is a little bit afraid, but uh, they need to accept that we are fast. Mm. I think the, the highlights of my um, life is when me and Emil are in this unique mode in the car and playing music and just enjoying life. I feel like a teenager spending time with Emil and he brings up the playlist and songs. The time just flies. It's like you're dreaming and still you're awake. Uh, 
everywhere in the motorsport, teamwork is very important. But, but he, especially here at the Dakar. The teamwork in itself was absolutely superb. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I really liked it when even the engineers helped the mechanics were to build up the tents and all of this. And it was a very, very nice working atmosphere. I have to say I'm, I'm very, very proud on the teams at home in Neuburg, in Neckarsulm, but also here, what we have achieved. It is a success story. Once again, a real pioneering achievement by Audi that shows that courage and hard work always pays off. For me, that's exactly what Audi is. And I am pleased and proud to be part of it. I think next year is very simple, but it's not going to be easy. We need to do a lot of things. But when we, we saw the level of the car, the target will be just to win.